Hello and thanks for joining us for this week's edition of France in Focus, coming to you from Notre Dame Cathedral, Our Lady of Paris, the most visited monument in the French capital. Well, this magnificent Gothic cathedral was built in the 12th century and it's been made famous across the globe through art, literature, music, even Disney cartoons. Well, as you can see, it is huge. That means that maintaining it is both expensive and time-consuming. We'll tell you more about that in just a moment. We'll also take you on a little guided tour. But first, let's take a look at how this cathedral was built. The construction of Notre Dame dates back to the 12th century. And the legend goes that Pope Alexander III laid the first cornerstone in 1163. Four stages of construction then followed one another until the middle of the 13th century. The choir and its two ambler trees were built first, and then the nave, side aisles and the galleries. The foundation for the facade was laid down, and last of all came the upper gallery and the famous two towers on the outside. The building work came to an end in 1250, but additional construction and adjustments were made until the end of the 18th century. During the revolutionary years, Notre Dame was the victim of numerous acts of vandalism. The spire was taken down and the statues in the Gallery of Kings destroyed. After the revolution, it was again celebrated. Napoleon was crowned emperor there in 1804, and Victor Hugo wrote a book named after the cathedral in 1831. The popularity of the novel sparked a movement for its restoration. In 1844, the project was entrusted to Eugène Viollet-le-Duc, who rebuilt the spire and installed the famous gargoyles on the balustrade outside. Well, we're now at the high altar here at Notre Dame Cathedral, looking down on which are two statues, one of Louis XIII kneeling down, the other of his son, Louis XIV. Well, to tell us more about that and uh, some other historical aspects of this cathedral is Odile Pinard. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. Um, Odile, just start by telling us, if you will, what's the significance of, of these statues? Well, it's just because he's dedicating his kingdom to the Virgin and offering his crown and scepter to the Virgin Mary. And of course, Louis XIII wanted to make some changes, didn't he, to yes. the cathedral? Yes, he wanted to. But unfortunately, he died very soon, uh, in uh, 1643. So he had in time uh, to uh, begin the work. And Louis XIV, at the end of his kinship, did the work for uh, the embellishment of uh, the choir. We talk a lot about the restoration of Notre Dame today, uh, and there's a fund that's been launched to help pay for it. But it's not a new idea, is it? There's been phases of restoration throughout the centuries. Of course, the uh, cathedral needs maintenance, you know. So uh, in the 18th century, they had to um, rebuild uh, the vault on top of the crossing, and they had to uh, rebuild uh, uh, in the south transept, uh, the rose window. Uh, during the French Revolution, uh, they had to demolish the spire because it had become very dangerous. And afterwards, there were other works in the 19th century and a huge restoration in the 19th century. Okay, well, thank you very much. Stay with us, uh, Odile, because we're going to be continuing our tour with you in just a moment. But this cathedral, as well as being beautiful, has a whole host of structural problems. But luckily, help is at hand. The Friends of Notre Dame has been raising money precisely to address this long list of repairs. It's a side of Notre Dame tourists don't get to see. On a guided tour like no other, with building conservation expert Christelle Gara. It's in a far worse state than the north side. Every year, she inspects the state of the cathedral's facades to measure the deterioration of the windows, statues and gargoyles. It's a lot more exposed to bad weather, wind, rain, even the sun. Sometimes repairs are urgent. We had to put straps around the statue to keep it in place. Philippe Villeneuve has been the cathedral's head architect for the last five years. He says the building is in a bad state 
as cement used in the 19th century restoration is beginning to crumble. The stone is porous, the cement is rock solid, so solid that when water enters the masonry, it can only seep out through the stone and not the cement, so the stones are getting completely worn down and the cement seal remains intact. Notre Dame spire measures 100 meters from the ground. Its restoration began last year, as well as repairs to the rampart walkway, gargoyles and pinnacles as part of a 60 million euro project over 10 years. The French government is covering two thirds of the costs, but the church has to find the remaining 20 million euros and has turned to sponsorship to foot the bill. Cécile Passat has donated several hundred euros online. I think Notre Dame is important for the heritage of European Gothic architecture and we're also raising the awareness of millions of tourists by speaking about the damage, which they won't have necessarily realized is an issue. Notre Dame has received 400 donations in the last year, but it's far from enough for Michel Picot, who's looking for donations on the other side of the Atlantic with his foundation Friends of Notre Dame. Notre Dame is the first monument that springs to mind when Americans think of Europe. They know the book by Victor Hugo, and they know even better the musicals and cartoons, such as The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Between 30 and 50,000 visitors from across the globe come to admire the gem of French Gothic architecture every day. But the church has always refused to introduce paid entry for tourists. Well, perhaps some of the most instantly recognisable features of Notre Dame are the rose windows, which can be found at the north, south and west of the cathedral, uh, this one being the uh, western rose window. We're here to tell us more about those and the repair works that need doing at this cathedral. Of course, our guide, Odile Pinard, thank you for staying with us. Um, just tell us first, well, what's so special about the rose windows? First of all, this Western rose window has been put in place in the 20s and it was the biggest rose window ever placed in a church. Uh, before, uh, in Romanesque style, you couldn't open such large rose windows. Now, of course, because of winds and rain, it suffered a lot. So as far as the 16th century, it has to be, in, to be repaired. Um, you can see some medallions. You have maybe only 12 or 13 medallions, uh, really original ones mm. because of the reparation. But there is a meaning of this rose window because the faithful could see it only when leaving the cathedral. And they were reminded to have to dedicate their life to Jesus Christ, who is in the middle, in the central medallion, with the Virgin Mary. You have a virgin and child uh, dating to the 19th century. And I can imagine that repairing such a window is a very complicated business. Uh, it is, and it was especially difficult in the 19th century because during the 17th and 18th century, uh, they had lost the technique. So they had to, to learn again. It was a hard job and they did a lot in the 19th century. It was a very clever job. You've been a guide for many years now at this cathedral, Odile. Just tell us, is there one particular place in the cathedral that is close to your heart? Well, just uh, being in the crossing. And when you are uh, at the crossing, you can see at once the west rose window, the north one, the south one. The west one is about those present days, but the north one is about our past and the south one about our future. So we are emerged in eternity. <laughs> All right, well, Odile Pinard, thank you for sharing that with us. And thank you to you for watching. I'll see you again soon here on France 24. Mm -hmm.